Hey guys, what's up? The uh, last video of me just basically upgrading RAM and showing off these awesome compute node and server uh, hardware stuff seemed to do pretty well. So we're back at it again with another one of our C6525 Dell compute uh, blades that goes in our C6400 chassis. Actually right there, you can see we have an R640, which is actually a VX rail E560F. We'll be going over that in another one of these little videos. If uh, people keep liking these, I will be doing that. We have a ton of drives to actually put in that one. And we'll be talking about that one because we have this one and it's uh, its sister node, which is actually on the way. And I'd love to do some videos upgrading those. But uh, it's like 1 a.m. right now, so that's why I'm being kind of quiet because I do have neighbors. But anyways, this node is going to be a little different from the last one. In the last one, we put in dual 10 gig. So we put in two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports in one of these Intel uh, X520DA2 NICs. And um, we're not doing that today. I've actually decided that we're going to be leaving the Mellanox Connect X6 100 gigabit per second uh, NIC in this system today because this is going to be one of our um, HPC slash backend hosting nodes. So this server is going to be available for bare metal hosting and high performance compute. So it's going to be clusterable with the node next to it. So two of them in this four node chassis are going to have 100 gig, which you can see some of them already have, and two of them are gonna have actually four 10 gig ports just cause I have so many of these <laughs> NICs. So anyways, as you see, we have a ton of RAM and the first step we're gonna do is we're going to, same as last time, just pop out the old sticks. We do gotta remove this middle piece, which I'm assuming I put it back in the other server. And that gives us access to all of our like small and kind of annoying to get to. Things. This is almost a challenge because at this point, not only am I doing this one-handed, I am basically just laying on my stomach on the floor, which is, as you can see, carpet. So, not only am I playing with these multi-thousand dollar servers on the carpet with one hand, but now we're doing it laying down. Because I am tired, but I have to stay up all night because I've got something in the morning. And you know how it is when you can't sleep. So, anyways, we're going to open all these RAM slots because yes, we are filling out every single RAM slot. The goal with all of these server nodes is to get full eight channels per CPU. So we've got to pop open all of our RAM slots and then uh, let's grab from this right here because we've put in our old sticks here. I'm going to start grabbing these Cisco 32 gig Samsung dims right here. They're only 2133 but the capacity and bandwidth are more important than the speed. And I'm gonna to try to be quiet during all the clicks because the, the hope is to put together a compilation of all of the RAM clicks once we're done with this whole project. Um, Cause that actually was requested and you know, was something I thought about doing cause I, I love that sound and I know a lot of people do too. So we're just gonna keep grabbing these. Oh, did I just, no, I put that in right. It is not as easy with one hand as it is with two, especially while holding this admittedly very heavy phone. There we go. And that's the last dim in this stack. So we're going to pop in the dims we just replaced into there before we forget and leave them on the carpet where they will get stepped on by, well, me. So we're just gonna keep filling out these trays and we're gonna keep these because they will be going into one of these. These are 2666 dims. So one of our servers, especially our compute servers, will have double the memory speed, uh, but half the memory capacity, just so we can offer the best of both worlds. Well, the, the minimum of both worlds, so to speak, but you get the point. All right, we're gonna start grabbing from the next tray and finish out the eight channels in our first 7532. 
32 core, 64 thread processor, of which there are two in this blade. Come on. Oh, I completely missed. Look at that. All right, moving on to the second CPU. Like I said, the goal is always eight channels per CPU. We don't want to leave too much performance on the table as it pertains to cost. And that's why we're at least getting all of our bandwidth even if we don't have the max speed RAM supported. But all this RAM cost me like 200 bucks. Thank you, vendor connections. Somebody tells me I was talking more in the last video, but I'm kind of crushing my uh, uh, air storage by being fat and laying on this floor. Yeah, let's pop in this one first. Now the last one. Now, while we're here, it may not be recommended. Like I said, I wish I could use that OCP 3.0 slot, but like I said, I am moving in about four days now. So I don't have time to eBay an OCP 3.0 card to put in there, even though I'd really love to, especially since we have our 25 slash 100 gigabit switch over there, which we finally learned how it works. But I am going to pop out this and put in one of our 10 gigabit NICs because we have so many extras. And the reason I'm gonna put in one of these is because since we're offering bare metal hosting on a chassis like this, having one singular NIC plus the management port, which also acts as a one gig NIC, um, it's just not enough. If someone wants to spin up like a virtual router or do any kind of infrastructure on there, having a full separate NIC with two ports, uh, is going to be huge. E even with just hundred gig, like hundred gig is great. And having one port's awesome. But if you need to do anything that requires more than one NIC port, a single one gig is not going to cut it. So we're going to throw in a, a dual 10 gig just because, you know, we can. So, uh, let me get this thing popped out real quick and I'll show you guys what it, what it looks like. It's actually interesting with the way the, these cables work. Thankfully, Dell made it really intuitive to upgrade these by actually just pointing out out exactly where the screws are uh, probably... but of course they're all like seized from the server being a couple years old at this point like I said these are only epic Rome CPUs I think actually to get this one out yeah you basically need to take out the other riser it's actually a screw all the way down there Hold on there we go come on Oh God, that's really seized. Yeah, that's not good. One sec, let me see if I can get this. You know what they say, when it stops being Phillips, it starts being flathead. Although what I say is everything's a flathead. All right, hold up, let me not strip this. All right, it's actually a screw like way down there. So we're gonna pop out this riser first. And you can see there's our 100 gig Mellanox connect. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> It's probably not the right way to hold it. Don't want to damage anything in there. She's that little weird connector, double density connector. It looks like a chipset or some kind of controller. Maybe it's almost like a, okay, I just stop talking because I'm saying stupid. All right, now we can reach this other screw, which is not as seized as the other one. The other one could give us some problems that I don't really feel like taking a drill to my server, so. Okay, we're gonna cheese this. Can I just... Oh, it's bending in a way I don't like. Okay, so with it bent up, you can see this riser is actually just two of these cables which run to the front of the system to get PCIe and then come back to here. So let's see if we can just like shove a nick in there. It just, just... Oh, well, you didn't even see that. Oh, we totally can. Let me take the front thing off, one sec. Okay, so it made me and probably you guys a little bit uncomfortable, but 
we got our Nick in. So we're just gonna kind of kind of put this riser back real quick. Um, I mean, hey, we own the server. As long as it works, that's all anyone's gonna care about. Especially anyone interested in renting out a server like this. At especially at the kind of prices we're looking to charge. I mean, given the market average, you know what's crazy, dude? People are charging like thousands of dollars a month for like 24 cores and 30 cores and like 16 cores even. And I'm here like, yeah, we're offering 64 for half <laughs> for, for half when anyone else offers them. Yeah, we're gonna be offering these these like whole units as an entire hostable node where someone could run 64 cores and 512 gigs of RAM for, for what people are charging for like 10 cores or six cores of the same epic CPUs. I just, I don't understand it. I mean, I, I understand like, yeah, bandwidth is expensive, but you know, that's a bridge we shall have to cross later. All right, so we'll plug in this other thing. This is really, it, I don't even know why this, this doesn't seem like it needs to be a two-handed task, but it almost feels like it should be. Cause if I break this connector, Buying a new one of these nodes is not cheap. These nodes themselves, so with these CPUs, now of course if you break the connector, we just buy a blank node. You're still talking setting us back about a thousand bucks just for the node with the heat sinks and no CPUs. All right, we're just popping in our screws now. Okay guys, so I was just finishing up putting these risers in and I noticed something that kind of bothered me. Maybe you'll notice it too as I kind of scan over all these RAM slots and what the heck is that? Why is this one missing a RAM chip or two? Hold on, is this, did I do an oopsies? I did, I left a 16 gig in here. Put that in the 16 gig tray, pull out a 32 gig and have a nice uniform set up here. And there we go. Now we have a 512 gig, 64 core, 128 thread, 120 gigabit per second networked. It basically entire server as this thing can be managed and addressed as an individual server within this cluster thing. That just, it's just group fans and power essentially that comes from this chassis. So yeah. You know, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed it. I don't think I'll do one of these little videos per node unless you guys really want to see that. Um, the next video will probably focus on this server right here, which will basically be one of our uh, service controllers. And there'll be a ton of storage in it and stuff like that. I'll be doing routing and all that. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But if you guys did enjoy, or like I said, if you do want me to do one per node, let me know uh, quickly because i got to get this thing deployed soon. But uh, if not, like I said, we'll focus more on the service controllers. Um, anyways, let's uh, slide this thing in and end off the video. Here we go. Oh, man. You gotta be careful with these uh, big, thick connector right at the end. That's our data to the back plane, which we do need because it also connects all of our front bay drives, of which there are six. All right, and... There we go. We're almost ready for deployment. Not even close. I don't even know why I said that. All right, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed. Peace.